Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Hello, folks. Welcome back to About the House, your radio podcast audio library. And what we have going for you today, actually, we have a great show going for you today and something I've been excited about doing for a long time and uh, is on insulation. Now you think insulation, well, that's pretty boring stuff besides saving tons of money if you do it right. But also insulation, what we're going to talk about now, if you listen to the end of the show, I'm kind of giving a little bit of spoiler here. You got to listen to the end of the ser show series of the show here. Uh, but what we're talking about, you're going to hear about some installations that you've never probably heard of, some crazy, bizarre ones. But in this world of you know being environmentally friendly and uh, trying to use uh, conservation design, you know, they're trying to incorporate some different types of uh, uh, of different types of insulation. Uh, and you're going to learn about that. You're going to learn the pros, and you're going to learn the cons. And now this is kind of a piggyback off of one we did. Oh, heck, I don't remember. Uh, maybe Joey, the producer here, remembers. We did that show maybe three years ago on insulation. And there's a lot of great information on that, too. But this one's a little bit different. And actually, it's going to be a lot more fun. And it's also going to have some pictures. That kind of helps, too. Uh, but so we're going to start right up here. Hey, this is Tro I'm Troy Galloway. Uh, your humble host of About the House, and I own Galloway Building Services, and I do building inspections, commercial building inspections. I also do a lot of construction expert witnessing. Uh, so I see all kinds of problems and issues and things done right, done wrong. And that's kind of why, actually, so a real quick pitch here for the cons construction consumer advocacy, uh, we started this uh, advocacy, this institute up for teaching people the pro good things about different, different building products, the bad things about the different building products, also building techniques. And, uh, you know, we got a whole bunch, we're getting coupons, uh, money saving ideas, uh, manufacturers coupons, I should have said earlier. So we got, I mean, you can see if by joining it, you're going to save a ton of money besides getting a, a, a blog coming every week uh, at, at teaching you even more about these things. So if you're like a lot of us and you're a do-it-yourself do it nerd or you're a contractor and you're wanting to learn more about it, or if you're a builder and uh, you're wanting to learn more about different products and uh, applications and how maybe to do a better job, follow us on our Construction Consumer uh, Advocacy Institute. You will love it. Uh, and you can check it out there, out there. Uh, well, we'll give you a lot more information on this as we go along. Hey, let's jump right in here because I know you didn't join our show to listen to that. You joined it to jump in here to help us and pay attention to learning about insulation. So this is a fabulous show. And I, like I said, I'm very excited about it. So let's just jump right in here and get her done here. So we're jumping up here, and what we're going to start with is foam board insulation. Now, foam board uh, insulation, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that really is. And a lot of you folks, you see what this is, and uh, a lot, it's really something that do-it-yourselfers can use. Uh, uh, it's a, with all kinds of different applications for it, and it's a really an excellent option for all of your insulation needs because of the wide variance of different types of board that we have. So uh, we can jump in here and look, look at some of this different here uh, board that we have right here. Wow. Oh, here you go. Now, some of these words you're going to have to bear with me because honestly, I, I, unless you're a chemist or, uh, or a chemical engineer, I don't know how anybody pronounces them, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. And hit like I said when you after you hit like and subscribe, say a comment below, make fun of me, laugh at me, help me pronounce it correctly, and uh, and anything that you might add to any of this to help the rest of the folks, jump right in there and help us on your comment section. Uh, you know, because this is what this is all about is educating everybody, and this is, goes across you know the whole United States, actually the whole North America. Uh, so let's jump in here. Expanded poly polystyrene. Now. 
What polystyrene? Oh, this is a really common insulation. And as you can see right here, it's kind of like our white bead board right here. Uh, and uh, this board here, it's a, this is an open cell type of product. We'll talk more about that as we go along. But it's, a, it's got, it, this is really, really used and we've been using it in construction for years. As a matter of fact, years ago, we used to use this on our sheathing. We don't use much of it on the sheathing anymore. Sheathing is uh, the outside of a home. Uh, that uh, we used to use plywood and now we use zip board and we use all kinds of OSB board, all kinds of, but we used to use uh, insulation board and that helped, that helped a lot. Now technology is advanced, so it really is not as good as what we got today out there uh, we can use, but, and also it had zero structural integrity for what sheathing is something which we'll get into that on framing and different techniques but sheathing needs a little bit of structural integrity so we still use it we just use it in some different applications and you'll kind of we'll talk about that here as we go along but um it has it has its pros and cons and we're going to talk about a little bit about that as we go along but let's let's talk about one of the biggest advantages of this material it's an excellent insulation property uh, and what it does is it's, it's, it's R value. Now R value just, and I know a lot of you know, so I'll just be real quick. I won't beat up on this. R value just means resistance to either heat or energy flow, whether it be heat or whether it be cold, but it gives a resistance. That's what R value means, the resistance of allowing this uh, energy to transfer through. So let's talk about, we'll move on with that. But you know, polystyrene, one of the things we all like about it, it is very light, it's easy to install. It can be cut and shaped into fit any types of size, shape and wall. And it's great for renovation product. Actually, we also use it on EFAS uh, for the substrate of our EFAS or when we put our, when we brown our board out. Anyway, that's another sh story, another show, uh, but it's really great for that. It is moisture resistant. But it's like a cooler, okay? You know, a, a styrofoam cooler. Like, you know, it's moisture resistant. You know, styrofoam coolers don't leak uh, any water or anything. But naturally, like anything, it can get soaked over a course of time, but it's very resilient against it. So that's awesome. Uh, also too, you know, it makes it good for it like environmental or humid areas. Well, like on our southern states, you know, where we got high humid. Well, and the state that I'm doing this show out of today is in Missouri. And uh, Missouri is, well, at least we think it's pretty humid. I know you folks down in Florida are probably giggling at us right now. But, you know, if, you, if you're not used to it, it's horrible. Uh, and uh, so anyway, it's very good for that type of environments that you want to make sure. And it's good, you know, against uh, harsh weather, like, you know, like a heavy winds and rains and snow. And uh, builders use this, on, like I said, builders used to use this for exterior walls. Uh, we still use it on some roofing, you know, uh, material up, up on our top of our roof for insulation values. Um, the foundations is probably what we use it for more than anything that I see anymore is that we use this type of insulation around the perimeter of our uh, foundations. And to help insulate it a little bit, but it also not only does it give us a little bit of insulation, but it also, like I said, it helps with any kind of moisture issues too. And it's not the cure-all for all of that. It's not a waterproofing technique, but it definitely helps with the waterproofing and it definitely helps with saving money, especially if you've got a finished basement when you're trying to you know, heat it up and live in this area. So that's a wonderful thing that we, great things that we could do this for. Um, you know, but you know, there's some other things that's not so good about it. And, uh, you know, it, one of it is, is it when it's produced, it's not environmentally friendly. It's not eco-friendly. Uh, if you're into being, a, you know, trying to be all green energy or your products all green energy, which is, I don't know how you're going to build much of a home like that, but our product, but you know, if some people try and they try to get as much as possible, if nothing else, try to get as much as possible. But, uh, but one of the disadvantages is, like I said, it releases a toxic greenhouse gases and that's not good for the environment. Also too, it, uh, it doesn't decompose over time. So it can take, which is great, 
you know, because uh, I don't want it to decompose on the outside of my house. I don't want it to decompose in the ground in my basement. But what we don't want is that, you know, we have to tear it off or our scraps go into the landfill, you know. Uh, and, of course, we're not going to talk about burning it. But, uh, you know, it's one way of releasing the gases all at one time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably get some comments on that. <laughs> anyway, another con is, is like I said, it's very combustible, uh, you know, so it's very low fire resistance and it can melt easily. And when it melts or it burns, it puts off a horrible gas. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, one, I've, I've had fire departments tell me that the gas is even poisonous. Now, how poisonous, I don't know, but I tell you this, I know when it burns, it stinks so bad that it's got to be poisonous. That stuff's horrible. Uh, now, but there are value of this. So we talk about that and you can use whatever products, but when we're thinking about it, we want to see what's my R value, you know, my resistance. Uh, and so we're going to do that on each and every one of the products that we're going down through here. And it has an R value of approximately uh, R point, what, 3.6 or something like that, three and a half, 3.5 to 3.6, 3.7 per inch. So, I mean, that's not bad, you know, and that's kind of common with, uh, you know, it correlates kind of with closer to, you know, fiberglass insulation, which we'll get into fiberglass insulation a little bit further here. But, uh, but so that is one of the things that we want to make sure that we, you know, what we take care of is good insulation value, longevity. And if you're looking to be environmentally friendly, you know, maybe this isn't the product for you. Mm -hmm. Actually, not many of them are going to be. But when you get down here, you will see some of the what's really crazy is some of the better products are the ones most environment that last the longest. And, and that makes it kind of environmentally unfriendly, too. So let's move on down to the next one here. So we've talked about this. Let's move on to poly -aso -ky -ky rate. Anyway, insulation. Great stuff. Foil-backed insulation. That's what a lot of us call it. Foil-backed insulation. It's a, it is a closed cell insulation. I love it. I use this product. I used it on my own home. I used it. So I, like I said, it's a great material that we can actually use for building, like exterior use. I used it for, like, I have a home on the Mississippi River. Now, all our homes on the river are all raised up high because of floods. So that means that I got harsh environments, I get water, I got a lot of moisture, I got a lot of mildew and humidity, you know, uh, and animals, bugs, you know, cause it's on the river. Uh, but I put this on there, it made it, I put my uh, underneath the, for the sheathing of it. And I'm gonna tell you what, it made it airtight besides the insulation I put in the cavities. Now I got a high floor insulation and it, just, it literally, literally helped cut my heating bills down by 50%. Now, when you listen to the other conservation bill and how to save money on heating bills, it will talk more about how come that happens. Uh, but it's got a great R value and uh, it's probably one of the highest of the R values. But what I like about it, not just the R value, right? And the R value, we'll, we'll talk about that when, when we get just a little bit further, but the R value is a great, absolutely great. But what I really like about it is it's easy. It's for one man to use. It's really simple to use. So we want to make sure that that's easy. We could do that with that. And uh, well, so anyway, move on. Just I'm stuttering now. Let's do it. So some of the pros of that. It's high R value. It's anywhere from R6 to R8 per inch. Okay. So I mean, that's almost double to triple to what fiberglass insulation is, uh, depending on the uh, type of you know, fiberglass insulation and you know whether back or on back. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but it is really fabulous for that. And I mean, just for the least amount of thickness, you're getting a great bang for your buck. You know, and it's not just great for, you know, the RVA is not just great for keeping your heat and cold in, but it's also great for, like I said, I used it for sheathing. I wondered, would the animals eat through this? No, they're not. They're not eating through it. They don't like the taste of it. It doesn't, it's not appealing to them. So, which is, you know, like plywood. We'll have woodpeckers and stuff up underneath there eating on that. So that's really, you know, that, that's a really a great thing for it. It's also moisture uh, resistance. It has a high resistance for moisture. That's why I used it under my house. And it also is great for uh, preventing mold 
and any kind of mildew inside your home. Well, you know, you think on the outside, sure, but on the inside too, so that's great. And it's very durable. It has a longer lifespan than almost all the other types of insulation out there. Got a lot, twi a lot longer lifespan than even fiberglass insulation because it maintains its R value the whole time. But it does everything. It has its uh, uh, cons and it's not eco-friendly, which we've talked about with that. It has a higher carbon footprint compared to other types of insulation. We'll talk, you know, we, everybody's, you know, the carbon, you know, that stuff, the trees and stuff grow with. Uh, so, but, you know, it's still, it's nasty. It, it does put out, if the gases inside the home are released, it could cause you troubles. But most of the time we use it on the exterior. We don't use it on the interior of the home. It's very brittle. It can break. It's not recommended to any areas that, on, that has foot traffic. So you wouldn't want to use it, uh, say, like on your uh, deck of your home, you know, uh, uh, if, you, if you wanted to have a, a, a deck where you can walk around on top of a room but, but below you. So it's not good for that, but it's really great. I do love it. It is, very, it is more expensive than our, most of our other insulations, but ultimately it's not more expensive. For one, it's quicker to use. Number two, so labor-wise, number two, it lasts as, as lifetime as expectancy for its R value is so much longer. So it lasts, you know, you're getting more bang for your buck. So honestly, in the long run, it's got great, great benefits. And I believe that the benefits outweigh the cons on all of this. So that is one of the, these right here, we really, really, really like this particular installation. Now there's some neat ones up besides this one here too. So let's move over to that one right here. And let's go to this one right here. Now, this is what we call expanded polystyrene insulation. Polystyrene insulation. And it has insulation value. It's a great one. XPS board is what a lot of people call it. And uh, it's got an R value of all 0.45 to 5, something like that per inch. And uh, it has a lot of the same negatives as what the others have, you know, as far as the gas, you know, uh, if it burns, you know, it puts out a poisonous gas. Uh, it's, um, we use it for foundations a lot uh, around the exterior of our foundations. We don't, you could put it on the inside because it don't gas like some of the others. It's an open sale product, uh, though even being open sale, it's very water resistance. Uh, but you want to make sure that when you're installing it, you don't get any thermal bridging going on at that time. So you want to think about that. We'll talk about thermal bridging uh, later in the show. But anyway, poly, expanded polystyrene insulation. And I think a lot of you folks see that. I mean, heck fire, our coolers are made out of this type of type of material. It's real lightweight. Uh, you know, I, so when I, if you order, like people that order meat, you know, I see that and they get these coolers that show up right there at their house with full, full of meat. Uh, that's the type of coolers that they see. So that's a great product for that. Uh, so it is, use it for these type of installations, applications, and it's cheaper than the other, but you don't get near the R value, but still 4.5 to 5 per, 5 per inch, not so shabby, you know, not so shabby at all. So let's move on down here and let's talk about some others. We got a whole bunch of them to get through. So we want to get on through them all. Polyurethane insulation. Poly, and we actually call this uh, spray uh, foam insulation. And we let, actually, I love it. I think it's great. I uh, plan on trying to use some of this here for uh, my home. So my next home, because I'm gonna put it in the attic. Now this is what I really, uh, now I'm kind of just giving you a little bit from a builder's point of view, uh, why we love it. Now it's great for any areas that's high winds, uh, where you can get uh, and, you're, and you're trying to keep any infiltra air infiltration from coming through because like all foam ins insulation, it expands and it fills all of your cracks and crevices. Uh, but I like about it because you, I want to put it, I'm not so much as uh, mine that last home, well, it's going to be an earthen home. So I'm not so much worried about the walls, but the roof. I'm going to have my roof is going to be a conventional roof. So my ceiling is going to be conventional. Where we lose a lot of our energy is from the chimney effect that literally, which we're gonna say, talk about this, because some of these insulations, you can see this, absolutely. And so what happens is, is the air comes in from the bottom of your home and sucks right up because you got these air gaps at the top of your attic. So when you put this foam insulation down, you cut down 
the whole chimney effect. Kind of like when you put your finger on top of a straw. You know, you fill the straw up for liquid, you put your finger on top of it, and it doesn't go anywhere. Well, that's kind of how that is. You're not going anywhere with it because it just shuts it off. It cuts that, it literally cuts off all our uh, thermal cycling effect. And, but it has its cons too. But one of the things I really like about it is I do, uh, uh, I like it because it, I like because the way it applies its insulation value but it, well, I'm going to, it, but it, you know, it does gas and it does need to be done professionally. And uh, now what it is, it's a foam insulation. What they, they mix two different products, ingredients together to make this stuff. And it, because when they apply it, they apply it as a liquid. You see foam insulation. Uh, just think of it on more of a grand scale, like what this guy's doing right here, you know, uh, how he's having to spray it. So when he sprays it like this here, he's just putting a slight coat and then it continues to expand. But see how he did his corners first, see? He does all his corners like that. And that way it cuts out all infiltration coming through there, fabulous stuff. Um, but the two ingredients is, I mean, there's another one of them big uh, $50 words, um, but isocyrate. And that, that, that's one of the ingredients with poly, with a, po a polyron, polyron resin. Like I said, some of these are some it, 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 very, it, it's not as interesting to be able to pronounce it. It's more important to know how to use it. So that's my excuse. Uh, anyway, so what it is, it actually applied as a liquid and it fills even, like I said, it fills the tiniest little spots. And that's why I just love what's going on with this stuff. And it has a fabulous R value uh, with it. And it, it's a closed cell product uh, also. And you can use this stuff for cracks, crevices, walls, floors, ceilings, everything, even around, like I said, around your pipes or anything. Now, you want to make sure, now this is a little disclaimer with some of this type of that foam insulation, is if you use it on the exterior, make sure it's made for exterior grade because the sunlight will deteriorate it. And, but of course, we don't care about it when behind the walls or in our ceiling or our attic, but if it's to the exterior, uh, it will discolor, and deteriorate and, 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 and it's gross and, and, and you don't want them old fibers and a little dust going through the air. Uh, so if you do the exterior, make sure on the exterior you get exterior grade. Um, and one of some of the cons of it is it's absolutely, it's more expensive uh, than the other types of insulation. Uh, also, it's not a do-it-yourselfer type product. And here, make sure, make sure that when you have a, your, your, your insulator, your company insulation company install it, that they're well versed in using it. Because there's some big major lawsuits out there right now from companies that didn't know how to apply it. People are not even allowed, can't even go back into their house because it's been incorrectly applied and gassing. But that's only from companies that don't know what they're doing. Cause it, I, like I said, I would never put my family into a mess with this if it was any kind of a problem. And you, there is none. It's fabulous. You just want to make sure that it's done and done right. And what I like about it is it's got great R value. It's R6 to R7 per inch. You think about that in some of our areas where I don't have a lot of air room, I'm trying to make it airtight, you know, uh, you know, then I need all the bang for my buck that I can get. Uh, so for this, especially when it's thin like that and being as it's a closed cell, you know, say if it's up on top of a roof or you put it someplace where you after you're going to walk on top of it, you know, I wouldn't advise walking on it, but it can definitely take it, you know, uh, as long as it's not like major foot traffic, it definitely could take it. Um, so it's a great way of doing it. R6 to R7 per inch, you know, I, with high durability, it's longevity. It doesn't break down. You know, as long as it doesn't get any kind of sunlight uh, and uh, it's moisture retardant, that's fabulous. Uh, it's also fabulous for, you know, heat resistance. Uh, I'm sorry, fire resistance. It's also great for fire resistance. So that's another one that we like about it. I'm not saying it's fire retardant. I'm just saying fire resistant. There's a, make sure I get that disclaimer before I get all you guys hitting on me, hitting me this on this. But like I say, hey, hit like, hit your comment section. I love everybody. Tell us your applications. Tell us your how you used it. Tell other people how, you know, so they could expand on this because that's what our consumer advocacy is all about, is learning. So let's move on down here 
And let's move to the next one. We've all heard of fiberglass insulation, right? So we all know about fiberglass, but what are some of the things that we don't know about it that I know folks don't know about it? And what some of the things I learned about it, uh, it, it pros and cons, as I was doing this research. Uh, some of this, so, it, so you, we get it. What it is, basically, it's literally tiny glass fibers. Fiberglass is literally glass fibers that are woven together to create a mat. So when you use it, remember when, you know, people get it in their eyes, but literally, you're, you're, you know, that little glass going in there, it's, it's cutting your eyes, you know, so you get, why your hands and body itch so bad when you get all over it? Because you get cut by a million slices uh, of this stuff. So you do want to make sure that, and, and also, uh, I, this show isn't about this at this point, at this time, we're going to do another one on lawsuits and things like this about the different products. And, but this one here, if, and I'm going to give you a, uh, the, uh, the National Insulation Association, and they talk about, uh, you know, the different lawsuits and things and, and the good and the bad about it. But because if it's done incorrectly or if you don't have your house tight enough and you start getting these air, this, this, gas, this fiberglass floating through the air, you can't see it. It literally is causing health issues and, you know, and uh, people that have sinus issues, people who have allergies, things like that. So, I mean, that, that can be a problem. Uh, we like it because it is very user friendly. It's easy and we use it. Everybody's f familiar with it. You got, it comes in different colors, you know, basically you got uh, Ornus Corning, the Pink Panther. Remember that one, guys, uh, uh, girls, uh, that was always a lot of fun. But you get some of them yellow, some of them is pink. You know, but it doesn't make any difference. The color has no bearing at this time on it. It is a fire, because it's glass, it's mold resistant now, but it's not, now I wanna have a disclaimer on the mold resistant. If it's got a paper backed, some is un, called unfaced and faced. Unfaced is where, it's, uh, is where it has no paper on the back of it and where it's faced is it's a paper back. Now your paper, it's an organic material and it can get mold on it. So it's, you know, the, think about that one. I don't want to make sure you just think that you can stick it in there and it's just no mold going to happen. But if it is non-faced, no, you're not going to get mold doesn't grow in, in, in organic material like fiberglass. Also, fiberglass is absolutely very fire retardant. Uh, I've used it myself as a fire break more than one time, and it really does a fabulous job for that. It's also I, it's also very inexpensive, and that's why it's so popular. Uh, it's, besides being easy to use, and it's resistant to water damage, and it's also resistant to insect infiltration. infestation. I never knew that about the insects, but it only makes sense that mice and stuff wouldn't be around it. And I really, when I get into walls and and, uh, and like in attics and stuff, you don't, the mice don't really like it, just like we don't because of that fiberglass. That cuts them too. That same little tiny pieces gets to them too. So that's all great uh, to use. And when we talked about some of the already uh, the allergy issues and things. Now, what you do see is what I find with, it, with this fiberglass insulation is it has a tendency to lose its R value over the course of time. Now that's something I really wasn't thinking about at the time when I, over the years. And uh, so how does it lose its R value? That's a good question because the glass itself doesn't necessarily deteriorate. Well, how it loses its R value is it compresses its weight and of itself compresses and when it does, like whether it's in the walls, it kind of drops a little bit. That's why we staple it up the best we can so it don't, you know, come down. Also, uh, staple up the paper backing of, of that type of, pro of insulation, fiberglass. But when we use our bats up on top of our attic, okay, remember we talked about this earlier, about the thermal cycling effect where the air comes up. And, uh, and it just sucks the uh, moisture, the heat and everything right out. Well, when it's sucking the heat and the cold or whatever, you're trying to keep in the house up and out and into the attic because our attics are, you know, are so loose up there. Uh, ever been, okay, have you ever been up in an attic and you see your insulation's all dark looking, dirty looking, dingy looking? Well, that's, what, that's a sure sign right there of all the, uh, of how loose and how much air infiltration is coming from your walls all the way up through your house. So you make, you, you got to make that airtight up there if you want good 
if you want to be green energy, you want to save money, you want to be eco-friendly, you, know, you got to tighten that up. Fiberglass is not going to do it. But when it gets dirty, remember we talked about that earlier, it's the air pockets that are trapped well. They're not really so much trapped in my fiberglass, naturally, as you can see, because it's an open bat. And that dirt, get, but when that dirt and filth gets up inside of it, that deteriorates it quickly. And that's because now I no longer have the dead air spaces. Now I lose my R value. And in some cases, in some places, well, well you, you could literally lose uh, anywhere from 25% to 50% of your insulation value uh, over a course of time. So, you know, so one thing you think your heating bills are going up because of the cost of your energy cost, and that's true, but also over the course of time, your energy cost is going up because you no longer have that R30, that R45, that R60. Uh, it's because of the, of the, of the losing its deterioration. So I'd say it's, you know, there's the pros and cons to that. You know, fiberglass insulation, it ranges anywhere from uh, R2 to even up to R6 per inch. Um, we don't really see much of that R6 uh, actually, but there, it's out there. Uh, and uh, but so that means if you got a three inch bat, you're normally uh, like we stick in a wall. Uh, you're normally right around R11, R13. The only reason you're that high uh, because you have the paperback on it. But if you don't have the paperback on it, then you're closer to R9, uh, R10. So them are things to think about. And also one last disclaimer about fiberglass insulation. Folks, when you, go, you, you get your building inspectors or you put stuff up in your attic, well, building inspectors, they go up there and walk around the roof, attic. For one, they shouldn't be doing that. Number, it also shows that they have no idea of what the heck they're even doing. When you step on that, what are you doing? You're compressing that material. When you compress it, you are shutting down your dead air space. So you lose your R value, not to mention. So that means that you can't walk on it. You can't actually store stuff. You can't put your holiday stuff up or a lot of people store stuff up in their attic. You can't lay anything on top of it because as soon as you do, actually it ruins it. Okay, I got a quick story and I'm going to tell on myself and my wife is going to, she's going to hear this part of the show and she's going to laugh as she gets on to me again. We've, uh, this happened probably about 40 some years ago and the wife and I thought, Hey, you put this there, it's uh, this fiberglass insulation in the walls, but basically also we didn't have a lot of choice back in them days. And uh, so we put that fiberglass in the wall, but we have three and a half inch standard two by four studs. Of course, we're really smart, you know, and so we're going to go out, we're going to spend extra money and we're going to put two bats inside of that. We're going to compress them bats inside of them walls because now I don't, now I'm thinking, I'm thinking I don't have, you know, I had an existing building that at home that I was working in my own home. And I was thinking that, you know, with this and the north winds, I'm going to put it on this side and that's going to actually add to my insulation value. Well, I didn't understand the dead airspace concept at the time. So what happened was, is then we put it in there and then come winter time, we noticed there's frost on the inside of our wall, but only where I put the where I doubled it up. I didn't realize what I had done is compressed it and all and lost all its R value. Now the only thing I made is a bridge so as that the moisture in the cold can come through and into the house. I literally hurt myself. I could have been, I could have saved all that money, left it alone, and saved energy costs. So that's. That's jokes on me. I'll never forget. Of course, I'm married and you know I won't. <laughs> I hope she don't hear that part. <laughs> anyway, so let's move on to some more here, folks, and see what else we got here for insulation. So I hope that kind of hits on air. Like I said, if, if there's something here that you don't hear, you listen to our sister, you know, the other show, and it kind of gets into a lot more of our technical detail uh, about this. Now, cellulose insulation. Cellulose insulation. I love this stuff. It's of course it's got its pros and cons too, but I really like this here. Uh, it's a great for it, it, it's it's a great way of reducing our carbon footprint. Basically, what it is is uh, it's like a paper product, and they grind it up, and then they put a fire retardant stuff on it, and, and because it is fire retardant, you know, uh, it, it was great for that. It's you have to use a blower. But you can rent a blower at one of your, uh, the, the, a blower is something, well, like right here. Let's see, let's see this hose right here. See, he, what he does is he blows this in through his attic so as that he can fill the spots right here. 
uh, and filled up his cavities. But here, this is a funny story, and it happens. Um, it happens all the time. So my wife and I lived in a little town up in Illinois, and they, where they made this stuff. And every year they'd have huge fire because all that dust, all this product in there. And before it gets to be fire retardant, before they actually finish the product, fire retardants, you know, the chemicals they put on it, well, before they actually sell it to you, uh, it's still very dangerous. And all the time that bill, that they, they was having fires down there, big fires down there. Sometimes them fires got out of control down there. So, <laughs> but it, I don't know if it's so eco-friendly when it's burning like that, but, it is if you can save, and most of the time that didn't happen. You know, 99.9% .9 of the time it didn't happen. But we always laughed. We seen the big fire down there. We knew it was the insulation company burning again. Yeah, you know, it's just a, uh, it like, but don't take, it, it don't burn in your house. So I don't want to say that. I just want to, I just want to tease a little bit. So let's talk about this here. Let's move on down here a little bit more about it. So what it is actually is paper and cardboard they grind up. It's treated with flame retardant with, and it also, so paper, you say, okay, well, remember if we talk about fiberglass being, uh, it's also good to keep an insects and, and mice and stuff away. Well, same with this too. Cellulose is they spray a chemical inside of that too that will help deter insects uh, and mice and things like that from wanting to live in it. Very, very, very good to be done. Uh, you know, some of it is, so some of the, some of the pros, it's eco-friendly because we're using recycled materials, environmentally friendly option. So think about that. It's, you know, if, you, if you're trying to be on a budget, because it's not very, it's not real expensive. It's not really when it comes to cellulose versus fiberglass blown in insulation. And that's how we normally do our attics. We blow our fiberglass in, uh, insulation in. Uh, so it's because it's just, that's just how it's done, at least in our area it's done. And uh, so it's environmentally friendly. It's fire resistant, like we said, because it is treated. Soundproofing, it's great for soundproofing because it's a dense material and absorbs all of the sounds coming up through it. So it's a great, it's a great option to use, especially when we're, you know, we're, if we're trying to isolate uh, like a condos or one floor from another, for instance. I have a, a place for the kids to play down in the basement and I'm looking for some soundproofing so as that they can make all the noise they want and listen to the music, have fun, laugh, giggle, you know, what kids do. And I might just put that in my, at, in my floor space, my cavity between the, my basement and my upper, the level right above it. And not so much because I'm trying to keep any energy costs, but for the soundproofing. It's, uh, but the disadvantages of trying to do that is getting it blown in there. So, you know, you got your pros and your cons, but it's a great way of doing it. Uh, it's very cost effective, makes it, it's a great option if you're on a budget. So, but what are the cons? Everything's got a con, right? Everything's got a disadvantage to it. Well, humidity, well, it is treated with anti-mold. It can still be very, very sensitive to humidity and moisture, which can lead to mold growth, even though it's been treated it can still do it. Settling over time, it leads to gaps in the insulation. So, and like we talked about earlier, when it loses its, uh, the, you know, deep compresses like this, it loses its R value. So, I mean, now are some of the problems with that. Um, you know, normally our R value is, it's pretty much close to what we have because it's not paperback. It's, it's kind of just equal to what fiberglass bats are blown in is. And from 3.2 to 3.8, you know, and it, our value, uh, depending on how it settles in. Uh, of course, remember, that's all going to deteriorate over a course of time. But it's a great way of, of reducing your carbon footprint, eco-friendly, you know, it's uh, reusing products that's already been used before. So it's fabulous for that. And very, hi I highly recommend it. And... Uh, for that type of product. Now, recycled glass insulation. Literally, they take bottles, they take jars, and they take that glass and they make this insulation. Now, this is product, you know, this is actually what the end product looks like here, uh, but this is just a brand name. Uh, there's a lot of different brands out there, so don't, you know, I'm not pushing this particular brand, but I just wanted you to see what you, you can find it. 
So anyway, let's talk about this a little bit because it is really, 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 really good stuff. And, uh, and it's some, some of the pros and cons. And uh, one of it is it's really great for keeping your installation value. It's a uh, just, just, just kind of it's equal to some of our traditional type of installations. Um, so basically what they do is they take, you know, this, like I say, it's made from recycled glass. They take it and it, it takes the process involves taking the recycled glass, heating it to an extreme temperatures, which creates a wool like type of material. And this material then is treated in a binder to keep it with a binding material to keep it all together. And the final product is absolutely environmentally friendly insulation material. And like I said, you'll love it. Uh, it some of the other benefits is that, it's, uh, oh, it's like it's fiberglass has a negative impact like on environments, on your health emissions and such. But, um, you know, this, this really, we're not having that kind of issues with this. It's highly effective insulator and uh, because, and, and once again, great soundproofing qualities. And now this is a great one to use between floors. We use it in condos, we use it, you know, or apartments, things like that, where we don't, we're trying to keep sound from transferring from one unit to another. We don't really care to hear the bed bang against the wall from somebody getting too excited from the night before with their lovely wife. You know, we don't really want to hear, we don't want to hear them screaming and fighting how they, you know, when they, what, because they're arguing. We want to have our quiet. This is perfect for that. Uh, now it has its problems because it is a, it's, 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 difficult to handle. It has a tendency to break into small shards, Ugh. you know, and, 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 and it can definitely can cause skin and eye irritation, just like fiberglass, you know, uh, but this is real glass and uh, the recycled glass, basically. And um, so these are some of the problems that we have with it. And like I said, it's equivalent to, you know, a 3.5 per, you know, uh, R value, a three point three and a half uh, per inch. So, you know, and which some of it can go up to, you know, where fiberglass insulation that's got the paper back can go up to a little bit higher than that per inch. But really it's good stuff on it. And, and it, it, but it is also kind of, kind of dangerous. Uh, so we want to talk about that. So let's move on to this other one here. I want to talk about if I could find that one on my notes here, rock wool. And oh, this is now, this is a good one. And, and I, I think a lot of us have been using this uh, in a manner that's not necessarily what we th thought we should be using it for. And I learned when I did this show of many of the applications that we could use it for. So mineral wool on rock wool insulation. One of the things I didn't realize is rock wool is actually a brand name of mineral wool. And uh, minerals, we have been using this type of material. So. You got a home, you're doing a remodel job or a new home, and you got a fireproof once from one point to another point, where like between wall cavities or or any place or thermocycling goes or a fire trap or something, the chimney effect could happen where you could create a fire. What we do is use this type of this mineral wool, rock wool insulation. And it is code compliant. It's easy to use. Honestly, now. It doesn't bother me, but it does have a little bit of scratching and itching to it if you don't put the gloves on. But personally, I, I don't have any trouble with it. So it's not like fiberglass or some of these other glass materials. At least for me, it's not been. But uh, so there, there's a lot of ways we could use it. We, like I say, we, it's going to gain, really gaining a lot of popularity over the last several years. And so, you know, like I say, it's also known as mineral wool. And it, what it is, basically, it's a, made from melted rock. I know, crazy, isn't it? Melted rock or slag spun uh, into fibers, and then it's compressed into mats. And it's like I say, it's excellent for the thermal insulation properties. It's fire resistance. It's sound absorbing abilities is fabulous. Uh, and it's ideal insulation for your home. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's, it's got great R value. But what, and which we're going to go in here. And so what our value is, it's approximately R4 per square per inch. So, I mean, that's, that's a little bit better than raw fiberglass or, 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 or recycled glass, but it's, um, it, and, but I love it because it's melting point. So, so if you're in an area 
And, uh, and and I know that some of this, some of you folks are literally you live in uh, wildfire areas, uh, and because you're my family, some of you, and some of you are just friends that watch my show. Uh, and uh, so, if you're in a, one of these fire zoned areas, you know you want to think about having as much as your home fire uh, fireproofed as possible. This is one of the materials that you may very well think about using. Uh, so, I mean, what's the melting point of this stuff? 2,150 degrees. That pretty much means it's fire. It, it's not going to catch a fire uh, in case your house breaks loose of fire or you got one coming through. Sound absorbing, you know, because it's dense uh, composition. Uh, it's really great for that. Now, some of the cons. Got to hit the cons. You know, it, it's made of small fibers and it can irritate. Remember I said it don't really bother me, but it can irritate your skin and lungs if inhaled. And it's a little bit of a challenge, you know, to installing, but it's very much do it yourself or handy. You know, even our big box stores like Menards is carrying it now. Uh, yeah, Home Depot, Lowe's, these kind of places are now carrying it. So you can go to one of these big box stores and get it. It used to be we could only get it at specifically specialty uh, uh, air material handlers, like insulation companies or, or different kind of companies that sell, sell that, you know, specialized in that. But now it's in all the big box stores, which is fabulous. Um, so anyway, I don't know. There's, I just don't see a lot that will cause you a lot of grief on it. You know, it don't, it's, 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 it's not really good so much for our, you know, filling the cracks and crevices if we're trying to keep the oil filtration out like would be a foam, but it really, really does a good job. And, uh, but it is more expensive. So you're gonna be paying a little bit more. So unless you're looking for a particular reason to need it, like for fire issues or soundproofing and stuff, you might wanna think about that, you know, using it for your whole home. But I like it up in the attics in particular, but I, I like it this period. So, and I've been using it for a long time. We've been using it for a long, long time. Um, Rockwell insulation, uh, just to see my notes here. Uh, basically, it's a, they, say, they say that you should have a professional install it. Well, you know, I don't sell it. I don't install it for, for other people. And I have never had any trouble with just being a carpenter. Uh, you know, of course, I'm a building engineer, but I'm a carpenter by trade. So, uh, you know, naturally, and I've, I've used it for years, so I, I don't see any problems with it. Yeah. yeah, like that. But just be, you know, you should always put a mask on when you're handling anything like you know, these insulation type products that literally can break down and have little microfibers, you know, that float through the air that you might not see. So anyway, we got to talk more about that. Okay. And... Let's move on here to something a little bit, not so much fun, but you need to know. Understanding the health hazards with insulation. And I do, you know, I wanted to go through the fun stuff for, and we're gonna go through this. And then the last section is gonna be the crazy stuff that we get, we're using for insulation now. So we move on down here. And I wanna talk about some of the silent dangers. You can get more of this, and at the very end of the show here, we're going to give you, like I said, the, uh, the, uh, the National Association for Insulators to find more, get more information. So I'm not gonna get into the weeds of that, but anyway, so what we wanna make sure here is that fiberglass, we talked about that being a problem. You know, basically anything that has the little air, you know, little microfibers floating through the air can be a, definitely a, be a problem. Uh, you wanna make sure, you know, it, it, and there's been lawsuits on it. We also got some of our others that, uh, you know, that uh, gassing going off some of our uh, insulation, if not done right, some of our foam insulations, even some of our foam board insulations can have gassing even having gassing coming off of our glass, a recycled glass can even get some gassing coming off of that. So, you know, these are some of the health hazards that you wanna think about uh, before you use it. Just, and just, hey, if you have any questions, you know, uh, you, you just check with, you know, your insulation company, check with, you know, see if you got any health issues or doctor. If you do, ask them if this is a pro might be a problem or not. And, and what you want to ask them is, is, like spray foams, they put down a, 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 a volatile organic compounds, they call them BOCs. 
you'll see VOCs on painting, things like this. It's the gas thing. And gas and paint does the same thing. There's a lot of paints that have this, you know, the, you know, you go into a freshly paced house for freshly painted house be, before it actually has time to cure out and smell out. Uh, you can smell it. And sometimes that's pretty obnoxious to people. People like myself, I love it. I love the new smell though. And then of course we have some of our uh, old insulation. We used to be asbestos. Well, I think you've seen enough advertisements from lawyers on TV to know that's not good, but it's a great product. And we will, I'm not really getting into asbestos today. There's two different types of asbestos that to think about. You got the hard asbestos, you got the soft asbestos. Hard asbestos, like on our siding and things like that, is really not so much of a problem. It's really our loose asbestos or like our wrap around old duct torque and stuff like that, or, you know, boilers, old boilers used to have that, a lot of our fiberglass insulation. So, you know, and it's pretty much been outlawed uh, for the soft asbestos applications. We I think in the last few, 10 years, there's been some altering of the hard asbestos, but you know, you, I don't, you, we don't really use it for insulation, so it's really not part of the show. I wanted to really talk about some of the old ones, the, you know, materials. Now, here's one that we see in a lot of our older houses. Bricolite insulation. And I really did want to share with this because we see this in a lot of our mm, older homes. Uh, what do I mean by older? You know, we did have a time in the 40s, 50s, uh, even a little bit in the 60s, you know, that we saw this this type of insulation. And this insulation is definitely has, can have health issues, bad health issues. But because it uh, does have such things as, you know, asbestos in it, it has other chemicals in it that's, that's bad for your uh, health. But not all of it did have that. So if you have a home that has this in it, now, I recommend that you don't, unless you are having it professionally remediated, removed, uh, just leave it alone. Airtight up all around all your fixtures going up into your ceiling, like your lights and can lights and things, and, 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 and seal all that up so it's airtight, so that air, so none of the air particles or, 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 or any of the asbestos t uh, fibers can come down into the house and to where you're breathing area. Just leave it alone, seal that up from the ceiling, up and then you just uh, and then go up on top of it and then put bat insulation or blown in insulation cellulose or fiberglass or something and just blow it over top of it so as that when you get in your attic it is kind of you might call it encapsulated it it's not truly hermetically capsulated but it's capsulated enough that it'll be all right to get up there and besides you know you can't be walking around on it anyway because then you kind of destroy it but get it tested. If you have it in your home and you think it's a problem and you don't think you're gonna have the time or money to actually remediate it, do what I said and that'll take care of it and or at least take it and have it scientifically tested. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. Kind of, as it looks, save this picture if any way possible because it's a great uh, picture. Kind of like styrofoam is kind of what it reminds me of, like colored rock, imitation colored rock. I don't know, but it's not. Nobody did it on purpose. That's just how it is. Uh, and it's like little rocks and, and it's lightweight. It's very lightweight. And uh, like I said, you get it tested if you have it in your home. You want to make sure that it's taken care of. Uh, and then my notes say it started as early as 1920s uh, and uh, went all the way to 1990s. Now, honestly, I have never seen this stuff. I've started a construction trade in 1976 when I got out of the Marine Corps. And I have never seen it ever used. But that doesn't mean it's not because the notes, you know, the, all the notes and information I got says it is. So just think 1920s to 1990s. All right. Uh, and like I say, it's, it, they put asbestos. It is fire. It's durable. It's great for that. You know, it's fire resistant. It's great for that. Um, but so, you know, like I say, you know, just beware of it and, and pay attention to the picture because it's very important that we get this right especially when it comes to this. And don't be scared of it. You know, I, I didn't put you a website. I did not give you a website to go check or any information, but if you want more information on Brickmite insulation, hey, email, text me, 
uh, hit comments, talk to me, ask me questions. I will get back with you. If you've had any encounters with it health-wise, share on the comment section. Tell people what your ex, you know, your experiences have been, good or bad, right? You know, so everybody has a great idea of what it is. Now, for the fun part, this is the stuff I've been anxious to get into. This is where I've been anxious to get into, the goofy stuff. But they still use this goofy stuff for insulation. All right, here we go. First one. Denim insulation. So I asked my wife, remember a uh, denim? Is that where all the, you know, when you see these kids buying these 60, $70 pair of pants with the knees already cut out of them? Or that's for the parts that they're using to recycle? Yeah, it really is. And all the scraps that they use of our denim, when they make jeans and jackets and such, they take all the scraps and they recycle it. Also, you can literally take your clothes, your old denims, and send it down and get it recycled. Ain't that cool? You know, and denim insulation. So I, I just had no idea that there was such a thing. I'm going to get down here to my notes here. It just, it's hilarious because I thought, that's why I showed the denim jacket. But this is kind of what it looks like. And uh, it's a really a good product. I'm, I was surprised after I started reading more about it, learning about it, just how great it is. And it has several advantages over standard traditional insulation materials like, like fiberglass. So kind of let's look at this, see what's going on with it. Well, for number one, it's eco-friendly. Well, naturally, it's eco because we're using recycled denim to make this insulation material. It's sustainable. It's environmentally friendly option for homeowners, and it's a great way to keep your clothes out of the landfill so we reduce the waste of the landfill. You know, of course, I'm a big one on any time we can recycle anything, and as long as it don't cost us twice the amount, you know, because I, you know, I, I like y'all, I, I live on a budget. I don't have X amount of dollars, but it's great for that. Also, another thing it's great for is air quality. Unlike, you know, fiberglass, which has a, air particles, denim insulation is made from natural fibers and it doesn't create any dust or allergens in the air. So that's fabulous. That's a good one to remember. Good sounding insulation properties. Denim insulation can help reduce noise uh, from outside or even between rooms in your home, making it a great play, a great insulation to use in noisy neighborhoods. Or like I said, you have a play space or apartments or condos or anything like that. Now, like everything, we got to have our, we got, we got problems with it. And one of the problems is, is, uh, you know, is it's very, it's expensive. It's more expensive than our traditional materials. Uh, so, you know, it, it, that's a problem. Uh, it's not as effective as fiberglass. It doesn't have, you know, while it's a good insulation, sound insulation, it doesn't have the same R value. So you might have to put a little bit more into it to catch up to get that. It isn't waterproof and it is not ideal for areas that have high moisture air levels. Like maybe if you live in an area with wet basements, you know, it might not be something that you want to put in, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, wet areas like that. You know, so, it, but it is easy to use. It's easy, you know, it, do, it doesn't take any kind of special equipment to cut it or to install it. It could easily be cut with a utility knife, you know, just a simple utility knife. And it could be fitted into walls. The installation is, the process is very do-it-yourself friendly, very much like fiberglass. What I like about it is it's, it never really needs to be replaced. It doesn't settle, you know, like uh, some, some of our other types of insulation. It lasts for a long time, long time. As a matter of fact, one day somebody will complain about that uh, because it does last so long, especially when somebody else's patent goes out, huh? Seems like that happens all the time. But hey, but one of the things I want you to make sure before you actually use this material, make sure that your building department of your municipality is it's code compliant. Some places it might not be code compliant because they might not know that it's uh, it gets treated with fire retardant material. They think, hey, it could burn, right? And yeah, it could, but it's, it's treated. So it, it's, it, it's not going to catch a fire. And so it, it's great stuff for that. So it, and it's very you know, sustainable in, in material, great benefits and uh, R value. So it's basically, you know, it's a little, it's, you know, because it's not a fiber, it's not got the facing, it's pretty much equal to unfaced fiberglass insulation and our, our recycled glass, some of the other ones we've looked at already up here. And it's R4 per inch. So, I mean, so it's, it, it'll still carry the load that you're looking for, 
more bang for your buck, equal friendly. You know, people are thinking about that. And, and so we should. Now, here's another one. I didn't even know this existed. Aerogel insulation. Yeah, and that's kind of some great pictures of it, what it looks like right here. Now, it comes in mats and, and, you can, it, and it's not as easy to find because it's not real popular, but boy, it's fabulous stuff. If you're looking for, you know, when I was researching it, it said, if you're looking for the most perfect insulation for your home, this is it. If you put it in the right place, it is absolutely wonderful. And it's been around for some time and it just recently grabbed some headlines because of its versatility and its insulation properties. So, uh, so what, 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 what is this? So well, let's kind of get into it because it is kind of weird. Uh, at least for me, it was. Maybe you folks have seen this. And hey, like I say, any of you folks out there see this or have used this, give us your ideas. Give us your opinions. Tell us how you used it. Tell us how you, what you think of it. Hit like, you know, when you hit like and subscribe and, and follow us, you know, contribute to us because this is what the uh, construction consumer advocacy is all about. Learning and teaching each other what's best, why it's best, what's bad, why it's bad. So let's talk about this. So actually, so aerogel insulation is actually, it's a super insulator, they call it, because it's made from a gel-like material that's mostly composed of silicon, which is the component of sand. Uh, so it's, it's a unique st structure that gives high degree uh, 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 porosity and a low, very low density. The high porosity allows it to trap air, giving it, an ex I'm just kind of reading some notes here, uh, trap air and it gives it an extremely outstanding thermal insulation value. It's ultra low density makes it incredibly lightweight to other traditional insulation materials. Uh, you can use it over all kinds of different ways of doing it. Uh, I, I dove it because it's insulation values. I mean, it is our value is R10 per inch. Now, I would have used this on my basement, uh, my house on the river uh, up underneath the house. I would have used it for that if I would have known it existed. It can block over 90, get this folks, it, blocks, it can block over 97% of heat transference uh, bet going between it. Uh, going through it, 97%. It's really thin, so it doesn't take a whole lot to actually, so if you've got thin area that you're trying to get a whole lot of insulation in, well, just think, just think, if I was actually put this in my three and a half inch walls of my wall cavities, which I'm not going to recommend that you do. Well, maybe I would if I'm uh, areas up north, uh, Canada, Alaska, you know, some of my northern states, American states. Uh, you, you're trying to, you know, you don't want to have the big thick walls for the insulation. You can build the thinner walls, save a little money on your two by fours versus two by eights or two, or, or two by tens, which some areas that we use. And just so three and a half inches, that's R30 instead of what we would traditionally have was R13 or R11 with fiberglass. So that's fabulous. Non-toxic. I love that. It's non-toxic, unlike a lot of insulation materials. Uh, that is, there, it's absolutely safe to use. Great stuff. Versatility, it's actually, we use it for roofing. We use it for walls. We use it for pipes, just more, all kinds of things. Now, drawbacks. Gotta have the drawbacks because like everything, there's drawbacks. Pretty expensive stuff. And, uh, but now a lot of people are now, we get a lot of competitors starting to jump in on it and you'll see more and more of it. And if we could get more and more people jumping on board on this, there's the cost is literally going down every single day. So that's a great thing to think about. It's also very fragile, you know, and it's uh, compared to some of the others like fiberglass or cellulose. So just be careful when you're using it that you don't break it. So it la like, and, and, and it pretty much lasts forever. You know, it don't settle, keeps its R value, fabulous stuff. And, uh, you know, it's like R value, once again, I just amazed R10 per inch. Great stuff. I love it. Now, let's move on to now that, you know, now that I got over the love fest of this stuff. And when I, when I was doing my researches, I really got excited over this one. So anyway, let's move on here to this one. Well, here we go. Sheep wool insulation. Sheep wool. Well, I've heard of it, but I didn't know people actually used it. Uh, and it's pretty neat. And it's really got a lot of great things to your home. It's eco-friendly because you're actually just, you're not manufacturing anything. You're just recycling what you're cutting off the sheep, you know? Uh, so it's great for that. 
It's, uh, you know, it's, it's what's, what's some of the other things here? It's great. It's got good insulation values. Uh, it can keep your home nice and cozy during the cold winter months or whenever it's nice and stinking hot. If you live in one of them areas, uh, you know, uh, down south, where it's a, on a cold day, it's 100 degrees. This really will save you a tremendous amount of money. Uh, it's also moisture wick. It has moisture wicking properties though, and it can absorb up to 30% of its weight in moisture without you feeling it. And that means it can help regulate the humidity in your home. Ah, great idea, right? On high humidity areas, preventing mold and mildew from growing. Well, see, that's something I never knew until I did the research, you know? It's got, a, uh, and you know, something else I didn't realize either. Uh, but it's, it's a natural fire retardant. Wool is a naturally fire resistance, which makes it safer than most other types of insulation materials. Uh, and, it's, and it does it, won't contribute to spreading flames or case of smoke or anything like that in fire. And when it burns, you know, it's, you know, like hair, you know, it's, it has its, you know, stink, but it's not going to, it's not, it's not going to kill you. Uh, any more than uh, that, and not near as fast as some of these other foam insulations and some of these chemicals that they put in there. You know, it is, it is, it can be expensive compared to some of the others because uh, you naturally, you, you, you got to cut it off the sheep, you got to cycle it, you got to clean it, then you got to make it. Uh, and people that are allergic to wool may have, but not always. That's what I found interesting. The people you're allergic to wool, you may actually have allergic reactions to it. So think about that. Um, it's not, you know, they say it's a, it may not be as effective in very humid climates because of the moisture wicking. So, you know, if you're living in one of these places that's, you know, that's, you know, you're dripping sweat at six o'clock in the morning when you first get up, like maybe Florida or something like that, you know, not to pick on Floridans. I love Florida. My family would be, be sending me hate mail. <laughs> yeah, I love you, Lisa, Debbie, all you folks down there. You know, I know, you know, I do. Uh, but anyway, so that might not be such a great spot for it. But here, like in Missouri, uh, Kansas, Illinois, you know, through some of these areas, it's fabulous. So you want to think about that. And its R value is it's it's about what fiberglass is. It's a R three and a half to three point eight uh, per square inch or per inch. So these are different ones that you want to think of that. Uh, Good and bad for that. All right, now, there, here's another one. I never, I never knew that this even existed. Mushroom insulation. Mushrooms. Now, I, I don't think it's the same mushrooms that you put on your pizza. I don't know. I, don't, I, I do a lot more research on it. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, it sure ain't the fun ones that you do, the, the magic mushrooms. I had to put that in there because a lot of you nuts out there be dragging out there buying this stuff, thinking you're getting mushrooms so you could take your little acid trip. <laughs> oh, and the only reason I thought of that is because I had some, one of the young people working in the office said, well, I'm going to buy a bag of that. That's cheaper to buy mushrooms. No, no, no. <laughs> it don't work that way. Oh, but that was funny. Anyway, so let's move on down here. So mushroom uh, insulation. So let's get in right here. So you can see how they make it right here after they, they take it and then they make these bats with it. Pretty cool stuff, actually. I'm kind of impressed with the, what, I, what I've read about it. And, uh, you know, and it's definitely, we can use it. It's very energy efficient. It's one of the latest trends out there. It's an eco warriors. It's uh, very good for the environment. Uh, so you, you'll love that. Uh, you know, it's a sustainable because, you know, mushrooms just naturally grow. They're energy efficient. Uh, it, uh, it really cuts down on your energy bills. You know, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fire retardant, which I didn't even think about that, you know, but mushrooms burning. I never even thought about a mushroom burning. Never seen a mushroom fire in a forest, have you? Right, but apparently that's why. It's naturally, it's naturally fire retardant. That means it doesn't need any chemicals added to it. And that means no chemicals are coming and being released into your home. So that's a great one to know about. Now, some of the things that takes a, take uh, the, the problems with it is you got to have somebody actually knows what it takes to do it. It takes 24 to 48 hours of time, time to dry, which takes it adds a little bit more time to your job where you're not going to be able to get into it. Uh, limited availability. Mushroom insulation is not 
in every market. You're not going to buy it at your big box stores. You're going to have to go one of the specialty houses, like we talked about the rock wool. We used to have to get it from them. But the more we see people using it, and the more it's getting used, the more you probably will see it be brought into the big box stores. And uh, some of the cost of it, you know, it's uh, very expensive. You know, it's more expensive than most of our types of insulation. But if you notice that most of everything that is environmentally friendly, most of things that we can use over and over again, recycled material, normally is more expensive. And uh, of course, we know why. Um, so these are some really neat things about that. I really never even knew this existed. And I just, I just had to throw it out there because I thought it was cool. And, but now it's our value, kind of like I said with the fiberglass, it's equal to fiberglass. It's, it's a part R3 to R4 you know, uh, per, uh, per inch. So these are great ones to, you know, great one to think about, eh, especially if you're wanting to be uh, one of the leaders in the neighborhood. Uh, but I don't know, you know, if that's, if you could even really find it in most parts of the country yet. But like I said, this show's going to be out here forever, eternity. So by the time you watch this show, it very well might be on the marketplace where it's your big box store. All right. So when we was laughing about the uh, mushroom insulation, don't think they didn't give me the dickens on this one. Hemp insulation. So yeah. <sighs> oh, now hemp. We've used hemp for tons of things over the years. And uh, now hemp is, we're going to get into this a little bit more, but hemp's been around off and on for years. As a matter of fact, I grew up in the Midwest and all our farmers during World War I and World War II were given hemp seeds. And that's what they made a lot of the uniforms with, they made the ropes with, they made a lot of equipment with, and canvases and tarps, all from hemp. Now we still do, but then they outlawed it after, but that's how come you got so much of this wild weed growing around in the country like that. And uh, now, if you think you're gonna go buy a bag of this stuff to go get high on, forget it, it's kind of like the mushrooms. It doesn't have any kind of getting high abilities whatsoever. So it's not that, don't worry. You're not gonna have the dope head next door digging into your walls to drag it out. And if he does, you're just gonna snicker at the dumb shit anyway for uh, doing something like that. But <laughs> anyway, hemp, can you imagine? And look and see how they make the mats like this. Now, we got other things too. We're gonna to talk about some more hemp on other products. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do a whole show on hemp product because they're building, they're building so much with hemp anymore and making so many different building products with it that uh, it's, it, it really does warrant its own show. So let's move on down here. Let's get on to talk more a little bit about this. So some of the things that uh, you, you, you like, we like about it is environmentally friendly because it, it grows, it's easy to grow, it's safe, uh, it's got, you know, it's like everything, it's got its pros and cons. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's actually what it is, it's rich in a substance called lignin, 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 that's how you pronounce it. And after the plant's process harvested, the fibers are cleaned, milled into a fluffy kind of like a cotton type of a product. And, uh, and, and when they do make it a texture, and then they, that's when they make the insulation with it. Because it grows so fast, it's really, a, it, it's really gonna take, it's taking over really, it's really coming on fast, it's coming on strong. You can use this stuff everywhere. Uh, it's, it requires, you know, don't it, you know, because hemp doesn't take much of any water and it doesn't need any pesticides. So you don't have any kind of chemicals on it whatsoever. We can use this stuff in walls. We can use it in ceilings, floors, it, just like all the other types of insulation. Uh, one of the biggest benefits is naturally it's great fabulous superior thermal and acoustical properties compared to fiberglass insulation which which does hemp insulation has a higher r value uh, than that it also is great for blocking noise soundproofing uh, it's non-toxic it doesn't release any kind of gases it's safe uh, i mean it, it just it, i can't go on and on and on about how great this stuff is uh, it's environmentally friendly i think i said that already uh, it doesn't have a carbon footprint uh, other than a little bit in the manufacturing. But, you know, like everything, it has its drawbacks. And a little bit about the drawbacks is, uh, you know, uh, is cost. You know, it, it's more expensive. But the more we use it, the more the farmers start growing it, the, you know, and hey, this is a great thing, you know, so our farmers can start using this as an alternative uh, product to make help our farmers, you know, uh, stay afloat. Great idea for that. It's, uh, you know, that, that's a great one. Uh, but it, until then, it's still kind of expensive. It is moisture absorbent. 
If you get too much moisture in your air, it can quickly absorb it, become damp, and then you lose your R value. And then that also turns into mold and mildew and other issues like that. It has this uh, structural integrity. You know, it's less dense than some other types of insulation. And it can impact some of the structural integrity of different situations. And this can be problematic. But all in all, I think it's great stuff. It's coming along great. I think that you would really be tickled to use it. Now, fire at fire resistance, and uh, it does have to be treated for fire. It's very, it's, it's very poor fire resistance. It has to be treated for fireproofing. And that is right now one of the only drawbacks, at least as far as I'm concerned, one of the only drawbacks that I see to it. It is it has, you know, it, it, you, that, that chemical they have to put in it. So, you know, that, that's just something to think about. Um, so anyway, R value. It's just like fiberglass and, and, and recycled glass and a lot of these other ones we've hit. It's our value is about 3.5 per inch of thickness. What I'm thinking is, is literally when we go along, it's going to uh, it go, they're going to be able to learn how to use it and make it, just like when we're doing all these new technologies with these products, all, everything now will continue to get better and better and better. So what I'm saying today is only for today. You know, I, the products are going to get even better uh, and more efficient. So. That's pretty much the end of my show here. But what I did want to show with you here, oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. This is a good one. I go, well, how am I going to pass this one up? Chicken and turkey feather insulation. Really? Well, why not? You know, that's pretty cool. So my turkey and feather insulation, <laughs> I never even knew it. I, I've heard of, you know, feathered pillows and such but and, and down, but not that. But Anyway, it's great for carbon footprint. It's very environmentally and uh, friendly. You know, I think I read somewhere where we kill like 20 million uh, chickens. I, I think is what I said every year for consumption or co to consuming. I, I thought maybe I would have thought it would be. Oh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Maybe I that kick that back. I'm looking at my notes here. 50 billion chickens. 50 billion chickens a year are killed for food. Not to mention, maybe it was the uh, the millions of uh, turkeys, 80 million turkeys, I don't know. But you take all them feathers, and that's, you know, why not reuse them? And, uh, and what's really good is, no, there really isn't an R value that I can associate to this. And I looked high and low for that because it's in the matter of how we actually use it. But as a Native American, my people's been using it for years, you know, turkey feathers, bird feathers for insulation value. Uh, so, I mean, it's been around for a long time, uh, but you know, the R value is, you know, we, it's kind of really difficult, but I'm going to guess right around 2.5 to three and a half, something like that. So that's something to think about. And disadvantages is, is uh, it, it, it's more expensive. That's always a disadvantage. Uh, another con is, is while feathers are lightweight, in order to actually get a high R value content, you got to really pile it on, which makes the feathers actually, uh, you know, can add some weight. Uh, and so it might not be such a great spot for addicts and things like that. But anyway, I just thought that was pretty cool, pretty neat. I never would have dreamed it. Uh, I never dreamed it. So I realized that last section for things that I've never even heard of yet, so I, that they're being used. But anyway, I put this here, uh, here so you can kind of see the different parts of it, how it's designed. Uh, you can Google it and check out more about it. Uh, it really cool. That's not fun. But anyway, let me let us just. I'm gonna show you. All I'm doing here is just sharing. This pretty much concludes our show. But I wanted to leave this last uh, up here, uh, this chart because it talks about all the different R values we talked about. We went through a lot of these things. And uh, so you would be able to go back and, and check it and see what it is. Anyway, thank you for watching our videos, folks. I really enjoyed doing it. I know it's a little longer than normal show, but honestly, I think it's really worth it. And in today's world where energy costs are just going crazy sky high, I can't think of a better show uh, that we need to put for winter and summer. So thank you, folks. God bless you. And uh, I, I, I'm going to throw a quick plug in here for my producer, Joey. He's a great guy. He tries to usually cut this out. I hope he don't, but he's a fabulous producer and he's been with me for several years. And I thank him for helping us put this show together today. We kind of had to do it at the last, uh, kind of wasn't able to do it where we've been doing it at. So he improvised and we're at one of the premier radio stations in the country, KC94 uh, at, out of St. Louis which is everybody that I know of in my generation always heard about how great this station is. So kind of cool to sit here. Anyway, thank you, folks. God bless you. 
sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services. GallowayBuildingServices.com.